There's another side to this as well, and that's the corporate finance perspective, right? So remember, the, the, the electric power industry is super capital intensive, which means uh, it just requires so much money to uh, build infrastructure that's necessary to operate uh, electric power systems. And in industries that are really capital intensive, where it requires that much money to be in business, keeping a low cost of capital, in other words, an interest rate uh, on borrowing money is really important. It's part of what uh, allows utilities to, to keep electricity prices low for customers, right? If they're having to borrow money at really high interest rates, eventually who, who uh, experiences those increased costs are uh, end use customers. And so remember that there are two basic financing options for utilities, debt and equity. So let's let's talk specifically about debt, right? So what determines a company's interest rate on debt? So part of it's just the market rate um, in, a, in a macroeconomic sense. Um, the other really important part is the credit rating for an individual firm or utility. And so it's the same as our individual credit ratings. When we want to go borrow money to buy a house or buy a car, somebody rates our, our, our credit. In other words, they are giving us a grade that reflects the probability that we will either default on our debt and not pay it back or pay it back on time. And it's the same thing with electric utilities. So there are uh, rating agencies like Moody's and Standard and & Poor's and Fitch um, that give utilities scores, uh, basically grades, um, that reflect the probability that they're going to pay their money back on time. Uh, and so if you're a utility and you are losing customers and you, what that means is that you're losing revenues and maybe your profits are lower and it looks uh, a little less likely that you're going to be financially successful out into the future, then the credit rating agencies might view you as a borrower, as a utility, um, as a riskier investment. So when you're selling bonds, in other words, to, to raise money, the people that buy those bonds um, might view you as riskier, and as a result, um, they might require a higher, higher interest rate on the money that they're lending you. Uh, and so what the higher interest rate means um, is that the, the, the total cost of capital, the total interest paid uh, on an infrastructure project increases a lot. And so all this figure is showing is that you have different credit ratings on the on the x axis. So the A to B or triple A to B represents uh, the credit rating. So if you have a triple A, that means you're you're a really good credit score um, and you have a really low interest rate. And if you have a B, that means you have not as good a credit rating and you have a higher interest rate. And so what you see on the y axis here um, is the annual debt service or mortgage payment. Um, on a $120 million project that has a 30 year life. So what this shows you is that the difference in your credit rating and the corresponding difference in the interest rate really adds up in terms of the annual mortgage payment that, that a utility would pay on an infrastructure project. And so what this does is it creates another potential positive feedback loop where if you're, you're a utility that's experiencing reduced demand because people are putting rooftop solar on their houses um, and you have reduced revenues and the credit rating agencies view you as a riskier investment, that means when you go out onto the market to borrow money to build new infrastructure, you're going to pay a higher interest rate. And that, again, increases electricity prices for the people who are still connected to the grid and still buying electricity. So that's another force that's putting upward pressure on electricity prices for non-adopters, which again, makes them more likely to go adopt solar. So this collectively uh, is what's referred to as the utility death spiral. Uh, and presumably this cycle, this vicious cycle would continue until it forces utilities to strand existing power plants, for example, coal-fired power plants, uh, due to lost market share. So the electricity from those coal-fired power plants um, might be too expensive to compete in competitive markets, or it may simply um, not cover the cost of keeping those power plants online. And so if utilities are experiencing big financial losses, maybe they could, uh, maybe they would be in a position where they would retire those coal-fired power plants early. Okay, so as the question is, is this a realistic scenario going forward? So there have been some studies that have looked at the potential for uh, utility death spirals um, 
uh, unfolding in different regions of the United States. And what these figures show are uh, after-tax earnings. So you could think about that as profits for two different utilities. Um, on the y-axis, on the left y-axis, you see um, uh, uh, different levels of electricity demand, customer demand that's met by, uh, by customer-owned solar. So from 0% all the way down to 10% of utilities demand being essentially taken by rooftop solar. And what the different bars show you uh, are the decreases in profits for a utility. And so uh, the, all the numbers on the bottom x-axis are shown in millions of dollars. And then you can also see the percentage decreases in profits. So what that suggests is that, you know, for example, for a utility in the Northeast of the United States, if 10% of its customers um, were meeting their own demand using rooftop solar, a uh, utility might experience a, a loss in profits of about $575 million, which might correspond to a, a loss in profits of about 15%. What that translates to are impacts on shareholders, right? Um, so let's say that the uh, the utilities uh, shareholders are targeting a rate of return of uh, of seven percent. Um, that loss of profits might uh, uh, translate to a, a, a return on equity not of of seven percent, but something on the lines of uh, you know five point seven percent. So a pretty significant drop in profits for shareholders. And then we can also take a look at what the corresponding impact might be on retail electricity rates. The presumption being that utilities in response to experiencing lower profits would increase prices on the non-adopters. So the utilities or the utility customers um, that don't put rooftop solar on their houses. Uh, and in the Northeast, what it looks like is that, you know, all in average retail electricity prices would increase. Um, but at 10% adoption of, of solar by customers, um, electricity prices might increase from you know, about uh, 19.2 cents per kilowatt hour uh, to about 19.7 cents per kilowatt hour. So what that suggests overall is that, yeah, the utility death spiral is a real phenomenon, but the, the, the potential for it to... to um, drive utilities out of business in the short term might be slightly overblown. Utilities are probably going to have some time to adapt uh, to this. Uh, and as incumbents, they have some big advantages. For example, they can borrow at a low interest rate. Uh, they have political influence. They know the industry really well. And all of those things um, are advantages that utilities have that um, they could exploit in order to, to stay in business. Um, and they have been responding to the threat of a utility death spiral in some, in some uh, interesting ways. Uh, some of these are innovative and some of them are more willfully defiant and combative. Um, so most of the changes uh, take the form of billing changes. So utilities can implement higher fixed charges for customers. In other words, they can recalibrate how much of, a, of their revenues they're getting through the volumetric sale of electricity versus fixed charges. The more they can uh, shift their revenues towards fixed charges, the more reflective it is of their actual cost structure. Um, and they can also institute minimum bills. So for example, if you are a customer uh, that has rooftop solar and you don't completely disconnect from the grid, uh, utilities can get a little more money from you by actually charging you a higher, um, essentially fixed charge every month uh, as well. Now, uh, some of these changes are useful in the short term in terms of keeping utilities financial uh, standing um, on, a, on a more even or strong footing. Um, but the long term risk for utilities remain that you, uh, customers may continue to shift away from centralized production of electricity. Uh, utilities are still exposed to the risk of a, of a quicker than expected transition. For example, what if there are are really rapid uh, advances um, in material science that result in just dirt cheap, you know, rooftop solar that makes it a no-brainer for lots and lots and lots of customers. For example, the majority of a utility's customers to go solar. Um, utilities are still exposed to that potential outcome. These billing changes also don't um, uh, address the, the long-term threat of total grid defection, right? So these would be, this would be a situation where utilities are completely disconnecting from the grid. 
um, and relying on a combination of distributed renewable energy, so rooftop solar and batteries, right? So in theory, utility customers could um, cut the cord with their utility by having rooftop solar and batteries and just providing all of their own electricity needs. Um, and so this is may seem a, a bit far-fetched, but the reality is that there are some parts of the country that are not far away from uh, combined solar and storage being a more economical option um, than relying on an electricity utility. And so what this figure shows on the x-axis are different dates out into, the, into time. Uh, and on the y-axis, you have uh, the, the a, a cost of electricity in terms of dollars per kilowatt hour. And each one of those colors represents a different state. So blue is Hawaii, uh, the pink is California, uh, the orange is New York, green is Kentucky, and purple is Texas. And you see two different types of lines. There are these solid lines, um, which show you what the, the levelized cost of electricity um, from uh, solar plus storage is essentially. So the levelized cost of electricity of defecting, uh, of going off grid and becoming your own provider of electricity. And so over time, you see that cost declining. And that's because the cost of solar is declining and the cost of batteries are declining. The dotted lines represent the projected changes in the retail cost price of electricity from utilities in each one of these states. And what you will notice uh, is that the dotted lines increase and the solid lines decrease, and at some point they all cross. So the, the point at which the, the, the for example, the, the orange solid line crosses the orange dotted line is the point at which, uh, in this case, commercial consumers of electricity would be better off providing their own electricity um, than buying electricity from an incumbent utility. And so this figure shows uh, information or projected information for commercial buyers of electricity, and this is for residential, right? And so what this shows is that if you live in Hawaii in blue, uh, as of 2022, the projection is that uh, customers in Hawaii will be better off not being connected to the grid. They would be better off owning their own solar and battery and disconnecting um, from the incumbent utility. Out in California, we're looking at 2037, uh, and in New York, uh, out to 2049. So the, in the long term, the, the sort of the future of the electric power industry, the, the, the utility business model, where you have retail distribu distributors of electricity who are buying electricity from centralized electric power plants, um, is very much in doubt, right? In the long term, it's not clear that the utility model that we've really grown up with over the last 80, 90 years is going to exist in the future.